Um, yeah, I found this really, really interesting yesterday. This is uh, if you've worked in IT in Japan. Uh, I, um, I used to work in I, I've actually worked in IT, I suppose, for my first three years. And then I worked at a law firm, which is involved with IT. But then I worked in four years in another IT company. And now uh, another, geez, five years. So I guess adds up to 12 years. I've worked 12 years in IT in Japan. And um, yeah, yeah, two two interesting, really interesting cases. That one and this one that follows right after about uh, the kind of how, the reason that IT just sucks in Japan. Uh, I know that IT jobs in America and Australia and Singapore, places like that are high paying, respected, you know, the jobs that everyone sort of wants. And in Japan, they're low paying and they are work, work, work to death type jobs. And people often ask me, you know, why are things so different in Japan? And this is a perfect example. Um, uh, the the facts that were described in this article uh, in Japanese and XTech, at least just on the first page, the second and third pages, where I couldn't read the whole thing that's behind the paywall, but they provide a lot of detail on the first page, and they go through that basically there was a, a IBM was doing an IT implementation for Nomura, and uh, basically it got over budget and behind time, and in the end of the day the project sort of fell apart. And Nomura sued IBM for screwing up the project and trying to get their money back and to pay them damages. And at the, the initial stage, um, Nomura won. The project failed. IBM failed to deliver on time. You know, the project, uh, f basically, they, fa they, they, they failed the migration and so on. And uh, IBM lost. And again, this shows that it can be really risky for IT companies because you think that they're paying all the wages and all the sort of costs. And, you know, if they fail a project, which takes a couple of years and they have to pay back all the money from that, it's not just, you know, then all of a sudden the company is basically paying these people uh, for nothing for all of this time. So even for a big company like IBM, this is sort of as a big risk. And there's a question as to whether that's fair. I mean, for the Japanese customers, they feel like, yes, you know, you, you IT company, external big IT company, you're supposed to make everything work for us. And uh, if it didn't work, then you have to give us the money back is the sort of mentality. However, the facts of the, the, the case that caused it to be reversed on appeal um, it reads like every case that I've ever done. The, the the company orders the IT company to come in and migrate, you know, set up a new. Uh, they didn't say exactly which package, but it sounds like it was like an SAP implementation, which is what I used to do. Um, they, they came in and said, hey, uh, implement it. But they ran into, there was like a middle manager on the customer side, on the Nomura side, who was basically against the whole implementation and basically obstructed it. Um, by basically uh, com continuously changing the specification and the requirements and blocking approvals on programs and sending abusive letters towards the IT company trying to prevent them from proceeding with the project and, and you know both uh, verbally abusive and obstructive of the whole thing and the normal side didn't do anything to, to exercise control over the employee over the middle manager on the normal side that was um, basically uh, ruining the project and making it impossible to deliver that was my experience of doing sap stuff that you know the the, the leads of the it company and the leads of the company will say yeah we're going to do this big it transformation and we're we're not going to do any customization we're going to do it super fast and it's going to transform the company and make it more profitable and the shareholders are going to love me for it and they agree to it but when you start doing it in japanese companies the actual operational people normally haven't been consulted this has been imposed on them and they don't want to cooperate with it and yeah, they're obstructive and they refuse to allow anything to change. And what ends up happening is, is that these projects end up being where you try to put in a system that doesn't change anything. They, you basically end up trying to, on a new system, do exactly what the old system did without any changes. And typically management is very, very passive about that. And uh, they, they, they try to, it becomes an arm wrestle where the, the, they try to change the entire project. Where they want everything to be customized and they want to force the IT company to suck it up and uh, do the extra work for free. Um, and uh, yeah, they'll often do that. Where, and the result is that they will uh, force the, the, the employees on the project to work weekends and overtime. Uh, but they'll also pressure, back in my day, we were pressured to not report the, the, our working hours so that we would uh, charge as if we were working till five o'clock, even though we were staying to three o'clock every night and working weekends. Um, so basically it all got pushed down the chain to basically towards abuse of the workers. And in this case, it went to a point that the project failed. 
And the court acknowledged that it was the norma of failing to control its own manager and, and who was sending these abusive mails and basically sabotaging the project internally that caused it to fail. And it wasn't IBM's fault and IBM doesn't have to pay back the money. And I, I must admit, I'm um, I'm neutral on IBM. Um, there are a couple of other famous cases involving IBM where they were like project managers for projects that failed and they were forced to like cover the cost of the failure of the project, which was just ridiculous. But that is a precedent in Japan. But this I'm like, hurrah. I mean, honestly, um, so many Japanese companies basically use um, IT companies like janitors. They don't, they're not hiring them for any sort of expert advice. They don't feel that IT consultants have any place to be able to tell you how you should run your systems. <laughs> Ironically, they, they, they want everything to be based around the, the manual that they already have and not change anything. And that's why IT in Japan is miserable. Um, so, uh, yeah. Hey, Andrea, thanks for the uh, tennis update there, by the way. Um, <laughs> Ben Grant, I have not shaved a sheep, actually. I, I may well have done that if I'd stayed, but I left, so there you go. Um, so yeah, yeah. again, if you're interested in working in IT in Japan, it's better than it used to be, but it still is pretty dark, and that is why. And I must admit, um, seeing IBM get vindicated basically based on behavior from Nomura that reads like every single IT project that I've ever participated in or supported there is some measure of the behavior of both the abusive managers that are not being controlled and the scope changes and the scope creep and the 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 the, the sort of uh, opposition to the project itself you look at Mizuho I've talked about Mizuho a bunch of times and how that project just became a complete disaster uh, that, that, that is a, a much worse case than this uh, but this one as well Nomura actually felt like they could sue IBM and get their money back and the other courts have told them, no, it's your fault that it got screwed up. Hoorah. You know, that's that's exactly how it should be. And look at that. We're coming up on time. But I do want to talk about this. The the, the minister of the, well, the, the, the head of the digital agency, I guess, director of the digital agency, um, which doesn't start until September. But interesting case where a voice recording of him uh, talking with his uh, advisors on uh, very similar to the last case that I just said, apparently for the Olympics, NEC had promised a facial recognition system at venues and at airports, which would be to track mainly international visitors who were coming in, that it could ID them and match them with their tickets, so they wouldn't have to, you know, interact with the staff or whatever. It would all be automated, and there was going to be this massive tens of millions of dollars system that uh, they'd contracted with NEC to build for them uh, for all of the foreign visitors and so on. And of course, it turned out that with COVID and with the foreign visitors not coming, the government wanted to uh, back out of that contract, even though that already, you know, NEC was already working on it, and uh, but it, it wasn't necessary anymore. And so, when the, the the upcoming head of the digital agency was talking with his, uh, you know, advisors on what to do, uh, to basically they wanted uh, NEC to um, let them basically not pay. They wanted to cancel the contract, even though NEC had been working on it. So, yeah, they basically said in rough terms, they sort of said that uh, he was advising them on how to go to talk to NEC to get them to agree to drop the, 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 the contract uh, for, the, for the facial recognition system that, that they were building. And while they were discussing tactics, negotiation tactics, he said, hey, just threaten them. Um, you know, if they're belligerent about this, if they want to hold us to the contract, just tell them that um, we won't use them for any more work. Uh, you know, for, for, for government IT, just just make it clear to them, threaten them and, and make it clear they don't have a choice but to accept our demand that we do, we, we do not intend to pay them. And if they don't accept that, then, then they're going to suffer consequences. It sounded like a Yakuza call. <laughs> and he admitted himself that he was speaking roughly. Um, yeah, I mean, it was like Sopranos roughly that he was talking about basically um, – that they would uh, block NEC, but this is this is the truth of IT and government in Japan. The threat is never getting sued by the government or failing delivery. The threat is getting banned from work from the government. And for a company like NEC that does like half the government's IT, you know, it's a pretty heavy uh, hammer to to hit them with. But but it made it clear that you know your choice is between seventy million dollars on this deal, or you know a billion dollars that we give you another work that we're going to block if you don't agree to to let us not pay for this. <laughs> So again, um, really abusive treatment of IT companies. And again, you think about these companies, this is why they, 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 they kill their workers and they screw them with overtime and they don't pay them because you have constantly these companies like Nomura and the government screwing them over on these things. And again, I've worked in this field and um, it really annoys the hell out of me. I mean, again, it's uh, just illegal and unethical.